Hey everybody, welcome to what's going to be a weekly feature uh, with Theon Yubea from Orms. My name is Ryan O'Connor. We talk all the latest, not only in gadgets, but technology. And when I think of Orms, I think of the very best in photographic. Uh, and it's been quite a good year so far for a lot of manufacturers, Dion. Indeed it has. Um, there's been some magnificent releases this year. And right now we've got two of the latest with us. So we've got the all new Canon R7 and the R10. Nice, really cool cameras. We're gonna get into the specs of these cameras. Uh, just to let you know that there has been a bit of a delay, I think globally, people were hoping uh, locally, not globally, locally, we'd have these in our hands a lot sooner. Mm. Uh, but Dion, there has been a little bit of a snag, so we're expecting release in South Africa and you're watching this on a Friday, closer towards the end of July. Yeah, that is correct. So a little bit of a hold up, a little bit of customs, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary. Welcome but, to South Africa. Yeah, indeed, bureaucracy all around. But yeah, I mean, if we're just pushing it a little bit later in the month, sure, definitely worth the wait. Though. Absolutely. The lists, by the way, are very long for both cameras and there's no, uh, you know, uh, uh, questioning as to why the lists are long for both of them. Let's start, of course, with that in your hand, which is the one that, that I was most excited about. It's the yeah. one that I think everyone expected from Canon this year, and that's the R7. Absolutely. So your R7 is essentially the replacement for an iconic lineup that camera, a uh, Canon always used to have and that's your 7D series. So it's a camera aimed at your semi-professional, starting out wildlife, sports photographer, anybody who needs speed, who needs to be capturing action, fast moving subjects, that kind of thing. And that's kind of where this little bad boy slots in and yeah. it really fills that gap mm. magnificently. So you're running with a 32 megapixel sensor on this yeah. thing. Um, Canon's Digic X processor, mm -hmm. which is the same processor that they use in stuff like the R6. Yeah. You know, you've got that in the R3 as yes. well. Yeah. And that amps up the speed, I mean, yeah. to a completely new level. Absolutely. So this one over here will run at 30 frames per second mm. in burst mode, <laughs> shooting continuously with tracking autofocus between oh. every single shot. Let's talk about that autofocus just yeah. for a quick second. Yeah. Out of the R3, mm. it is, I've played with the R7 yeah. and I own an R5. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to say yeah. it, but I yeah. wish the R5 yeah. had the focus system that's in the, in the new R7. Yeah, so essentially the exact same system that comes down from the R3. So you have complete subject detection and tracking. So that's for humans and for animals and basically any animal you can think of. It does face detection, eye detection, body detection. It locks you on at a speed that you cannot believe. Mm. It's like, Canon really is leading the way yeah. with that autofocus technology yeah. at the moment. And that's a massive advantage. Exactly the same in the R10. They've, they, what they're doing is they're yeah. using this high-end uh, uh, technology and they're filtering it through in, into, into you know, all the, the, the cameras at the moment, which is great to see for, from Canon. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes sense. Yeah. You know, you, you can separate on other points. You can separate on megapixel. You can separate on the build of the camera mm. and the size. But autofocus has become a software sure a software function and it just makes sense give everybody that incredible system yes and you get people in and people want to go further and yeah. it's phenomenal you've used it it I blows have. your mind now this was the surprise the r10 mm. canon on have been known in the past to throw a little sneaky curveball in and go you think you're getting one you're getting two and they've done that with the r10 slightly later to the shelf uh, then the r7 we'll yeah. expect this uh, towards the end of august but tell right. us what we're getting in the r10 so in the r10 you're getting firstly you're getting a smaller body yes you're getting a physically smaller lighter camera yeah you're still running at 24 megapixels on that unit which is absolutely plenty yeah as we've already discussed you get the same autofocus system as you get in the R7 and almost all of their other cameras now. And then you also get the um, uh, burst rate. Okay? Got you. Your burst, burst rate, rate is a little bit lower. So you're looking at 24 frames per second okay. bursting on this unit. It's not quite 30. Yes. But still plenty. Plenty. More than enough. And in what is essentially a yeah. entry level camera. Absolutely. It's phenomenal. And, uh, 
I can't help but look at this and think, you know what I think when I see this? I think M50. I, yes. do, I can't help it. Yeah. I, I mean, I yeah. do. I know it's. I know the M50 is still in production, mm. and I know it'll run side by side. But I, everything about this, the feel in the hand, the way it just, you know, it kind of ticks so many boxes. It's light. It's compact. It's a really good go and grab and do everything uh, a, a kind of a camera. And I, I can't help but think of the, the, the Mark II, the, 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 you know, that M50 from Canon. 100%. Um, let's talk very quickly about, uh, and this is important, about vlogging. We've mentioned mm -hmm. some of the specs of wildlife. Life, etc. This is a vlogging beast, the R7. It really is. There's no more 30 minutes at 4K anymore. It's unlimited shooting time. Um, and it's getting great reviews from everybody who's used Indeed. it for vlogging. Yeah, correct. Look, you're getting 4K at a maximum of 60p yeah. out of this, which is phenomenal. If you want to dive a little bit deeper, you want to get into your editing, it'll also record that 4K yeah. at 422 10-bit gotcha. internally, which is phenomenal. Yes. Opens up a lot of editing potential. You also have Canon's log profiles yeah. in this unit. So C-Log3, an incredibly flat yeah. profile to grade with. Really, really excellent. And your R10 is not far behind. Nope. Very similar specs. Instead of 60p, you're running at 30, yeah. which is still very, very usable. Yeah. And it'll still do 10-bit recording. It's, it's phenomenal what they're giving you. Can't wait for, there's apparently rumored a uh, whole lot more from Canon this year. Keep watching, keep subscribing for more uh, content from Canon. And we didn't even touch on the fact that they've also, these two uh, uh, cameras pack these new lens system on it, but yeah. the RFS system, uh, the S-mount system, and it's a new system that Canon's launched. Uh, it fits onto, uh, look at that. So you've got the, uh, you've got the, the kind of a mount, the RF mount that we're, we're used to seeing, that big, chunky RF mount. And now you've got the, the S version of the RF lenses. Yeah. And it's an important thing to touch on because you now have access to all of the new RF generation lenses, yes. which supersede your EF mount in Got you. every conceivable way. Yeah. And you now have access to that at a much more affordable price point Got you. than climbing in at an R6 or an R5. Yeah. And for good measure, Canon still throw in the adapter when you purchase one of Very these, true. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, right, from cameras onto the world of gimbals. Now, uh, we're currently shooting this on one of these products. It's a DGI. They are uh, global leaders in the handheld gimbal space. Uh, they know what it takes uh, for you to get that steady shot, the perfect shot, and also that there's two different kind of users for that uh, device. You get somebody who's, uh, who's really professional at what they do. They're mm -hmm. gonna use that to make a lot of money out of. And then the recreational user that I'd like to see myself and uh, classify myself in in that kind of a category there was nothing wrong with the products they had but as typical DGI they went and brought out a new one yeah absolutely so we have the all-new RS3 yeah um, and we've got two of them over there stunning let's pick yeah. them up and magically they appear in our hands look at that this is the RS3 but that over there is the bad boy yeah RS3 Pro um, mm. very similar actually between mm. the two and if you look at it at first glance they kind of almost look the same. Yeah. And I think that's quite nice from DJI. Yes. Big thing over here, on the Pro, you've got carbon fiber oh, handles. Of carbon there, it looks okay. like it. As opposed to aluminum on yeah. that unit. You will also see that your axis arms are significantly longer on Aren't the you? Pro. So the main benefit of that is it allows you to mount bigger cameras. Payload. Yeah. So payload is, is going, we're going a lot heavier cameras. Absolutely. So on this one, you're going three kilograms. On this one, you can go up to 4.5 kilograms. Wow. But not just the payload. You can now, because the arms are longer, you can fit bigger cameras with bigger lenses yes. on here where you don't run into sort of obstructions. And that's very, very important. Yeah. There's also been a lot of quality of life upgrades mm. over here. So you've got full OLED screens on both of them now. On the rear. Brilliant. Yep, which is absolutely excellent. So with that, you can now also run video feed from your cameras. You can see what you're effectively shooting on there if you don't have access to a screen on your camera. You can control the units from there. You can switch all your modes. It's become a much more self-contained system mm. than what it used to be. Absolutely. And um, yeah, the functionality just keeps getting better. It, it's so true. And DJI keep listening to what their customers want. They don't want to have to hassle with resetting their gimbal once they're done shooting. So guess what? On the RS3, it's no longer a problem. When you turn it off, it automatically resets. So it's, it goes back to its default where you can mm. just lock it into place as opposed to manually having to lock up the previous system. It's the little things in life that we take, uh, we take you know, joy in. Those little details that DJI get right. Yeah. 
Speaking of DJI, we go from these beautiful handheld gimbals to the world of drones. Now, if you're a drone aficionado and you love getting out and annoying your neighbors or your neighborhood, remember regulations <laughs> are key, so follow them in South Africa, please. But DJI, again, um, you know, this year we've had uh, rumors of lots of drones, but the first being the Mini 3 Pro. Yeah, um, and a big one at that. Oh, it is a big one. So your Mini was always the kind of the entry point, yes. you know, if you want something a little bit more serious than yeah. just a play drone, yeah. you go for the Mini, but now they've stepped it up. Sure. They've, and I mean in a massive yeah. way. Um, you're getting a lot of features that you used to only get once you step up to their air sure. series. Um, so you're getting sensors now, you're getting all yeah. of that in-flight control, you're getting a physically bigger drone, better video capability. Spot on. And that's what they keep doing, they just keep stepping it up yeah. every single time. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Uh, don't take our word for it, pop on down to your nearest Orm store and go and get your hands on it. They're in store, but they fly. So literally, yeah. uh, you might be watching this now and you might find <laughs> your nearest Orms, they might be out of stock. It's something that you're going to have to pop on down and go and see the stuff there for. Um, Dion, before we leave, let's talk about yeah. the rumor more, what's happening at the moment, what's the big in the in the in the, the photographic or uh, world at the moment what, what kind of rumors are out there so the rumors always tend to go along with releases yeah okay so right now the most recent release was Fuji's new XH2 got you that came out and along with that a couple of rumors for new units mm. that's going to be around that same type of architecture got you so now we know that in the Fuji lineup they kind of separate their stalls cameras from their video centric cameras so you have your XT series which got is you. your traditional stalls yes and then you have your XH, which is more video focused. Now, what's supposedly happening is that with the next generation of XT cameras coming mm. out, so your XT5, they're apparently gonna go ultra high resolution. Wow. Which no one else has done in that APS-C crop sensor sure. sort of bracket yet. The yes. highest you're getting is into the 30s. Got you. They're apparently producing a sensor that's gonna knock close to 50 megapixels in that APS-C bracket. And that's going to come into your X-T5, allegedly. At the same time, they're going to release a X-H2R or, you know, H or whatever it is. Like, also a higher resolution version, okay. potentially, yeah. of that. Or a version that's even more video-centric. Wow. So, I mean, you already have incredible video features on that mm. unit. But the rumor is that they're going to push it even further and drop that a little bit later in the year. Probably around September, October. Okay. Potentially. The way this year's going, mm. it'll get you before you know it, ladies and gentlemen. Probably. Yeah. Like next Friday, <laughs> Will. So we'll catch you again next Friday for another episode uh, of, uh, of all things from the world of photographic and the gadgets that you love to play with. Uh, from Dion Your Bear and myself, Rhino O'Connor, keep subscribing to Pop Mechanics. Give us the like button, share it, and we'll catch you again next Friday. Cheers, guys.